Hello and welcome to Artist Talks episode number 5. My name is Anton Malbauer, I'm a founder of Deep Dive Dance Platform, which hosts this series of interviews with various personality inside of dance world. Please consider subscribing to our channel, this way you won't miss our next episode and also be able to find out everything about our project. Deep Dive Dance is a platform that strives for development, growth and expansion of contemporary dance. Today our guest is a brilliant dancer, choreographer and theater director, former member of world famous Ultima Les company. And apart from that, successful actors, starting, for example, in international hit movie Suspiria, where she played the role of Olga. Let's meet her, Elena Fokina. Hi, Anton. <laughs> Thank you so much for um, doing this uh, with me today and coming to this um, interview. It's really great to have you. Thank and you <laughs> for inviting me to join your program <laughs> and thank you for such a great presentation thank you <laughs> you work you absolutely worse let's jump to questions i have so many for you and your career is really fascinating tell us please a little bit about your childhood and how you found dance in your life my childhood okay i was born in moscow region it's south down moscow like about 80 kilometers uh the name of the town very ancient town. I was born there and I grew up there. I had totally an absolutely normal childhood for a Soviet child. <laughs> Uh, well, I was always very active. Uh, I wanted to know everything. Uh, I was almost never walking. I was just running around. When I got seven, it's when uh, Russian children goes to school usually. They also go to kind of activities, to the palaces of culture, as they were called bad times at Soviet times. And I don't know why, just maybe because my mom would always hear me singing <laughs> she registered me in uh, children choirs okay <laughs> uh, and then for one year i was trying to understand why <laughs> and i was also trying <laughs> to find an explanation why I cannot stand where I want to stand. And every day, every rehearsal, every training, the teacher would put me back to the certain position and next day I would come back and I would change it again. So, and then when the year finished, I said honestly to my mom, I'm not going back to Quartz <laughs> because I'm gonna dance. And then my mom said, okay, 
what about folk dance? Then I said, no, I'm going to a ballet. <laughs> Ah, classes and she said but come on it's so boring <laughs> I said no 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 I gonna dance and I'm going to take ballet classes and so I did from the age eight I joined the studio of uh, with a beautiful teacher Galina Evgenievna Ramanseva who gave me the first sip the first love how far you can go not only with your souls, but also with your body. And for almost 10 years, I was coming back three times a week for my classes with my teacher and my friends until I finished high school. You started dancing with Russian Chamber Ballet. Can you tell us a little bit about your first job experience? I joined Chamber Ballet Moscow. It's the name. There are two chamber ballets actually in Moscow. One is just chamber ballet and the other chamber ballet Moscow. <laughs> no, no, not to make it confusing. Yes, yeah. Yes, and uh, I already joined it in my third year of University of Culture. So I was 20, 20, 21. I don't really remember. So, and yes, it was my first company, first professional company. And there were... Let's say it was not about contemporary dance, it was more about modern ballet kind of technique. And I met my first advisors and beautiful teachers again, from whom I learned a lot. And my first professional colleagues with whom we shared a lot. How did you join Ultima Ves? Have you know I had about this company before? I didn't know, but I heard about them because I had my very good friends who would tour a lot in Europe with a quite known and one of the great Russian choreographers, Alexander Pipilayev. They saw Ultima Vest company somewhere in Europe and they saw a piece with like 12 men dancing. So when we appeared in Moscow and when we all got to know that he is doing an audition, my friend said, you're going to fit this, <laughs> but you have seen a piece with 12 men. Yes, and that's how I end up on this audition, even though not believing at all that the choreographer from Europe will just take someone from Russia and bring it to his company. I was quite pessimistic about it, but I went anyway to see what's going to happen. And it happened that I was chosen. <laughs> and but back then, beginning of 2000, it's very highly special that a dancer from Russia joined such a company as Ultima S, wouldn't you say? Well, I guess so. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but, you know, that's why I didn't believe to the end that this is going to happen. When he uh, <laughs> told me that he is interesting to work with him, I remember I was still looking at him and like, yeah, right. <laughs> now you're going to leave and I'm going to stay. So I didn't really take it serious. And then I even remember when Vim said, why don't you smile? I said, well, what I have to smile about? <laughs> I was totally, uh, I don't know, disattached from the hope or belief. Also, I never planned to leave Russia. I, it was never in my mind going somewhere, finding something, starting something uh, somewhere else. No, I was quite busy <laughs> in Moscow, in Russia. Yeah, kind of miracle and it, this kind of dream you are living in. But actually, it's a reality, and then you get used to it. And <laughs> Why do you think uh, contemporary dance in Russia came about so much later or developed so much slower than uh, in Europe? I think it's not about that in Russia there are less dancers who are interested in contemporary dance. Dancers are dancers. They're wandering around any kind of type of movements or styles. But the problem, I think, is no. I, I didn't say it. It's not a problem. <laughs> it's not a problem. It's just a different culture. Just my opinion. I don't know if it's right or wrong, really. It's a big question mark as well for me. If I also compare, for example, with Italy, where the classic art, opera, ballet, classic theater, 
having such a strong base and it's very difficult for uh, narrow styles uh, with few people to get through. Also, uh, not only in uh, way of getting support from government or no, but also from the audience. They just simply don't have audience. Mm -hmm. And then thinking of Russian mentality, because I'm Russian and maybe you will agree with me, Russians are quite weird creatures, you know. They're always complaining. Uh, they're very proud of their past, but as soon as you give them a new food, they say, no, we don't know what's that. <laughs> we better go to eat our potato puree, you know. <laughs> In this way, I, I find that Russian people slow. They are not taking everything like just give us new food and we're going to try everything. No, they are very yeah. careful. Yeah. Yes. And, and what if it's we're going to like it? And then we will get to know that it was a joke. <laughs> so it's, I don't know, it's this kind of just feelings that just... Uh... So going back to Ultima Mass, what was it like to work uh, with this company and create alongside Wim van der Kebis? Okay, first of all, company. This is very important word. Not a company as an institution, but company as a, my colleague. The collective of people. Yeah. Yes. This laboratory which Wim allowed to happen, that's exactly what is the strongest experience for me. It's my ex-colleagues with whom I shared and learned so much from. They all like was chosen by Wim from all over the world and uh, till now we are think learning from each other. <laughs> I'm very proud of having those people as my friends. Collaborating with Wim, that's the whole thing, because for me it was the biggest and greatest school, theater school, stage school, because Wim uh, is very open in the way he is creating his work. So he shares everything with his artists. Uh, I learn how to deal with the set, how lights on the stage are working. For me, it was a really big school and, uh, and I'm so thankful that Wim chose me that time in, in Moscow. I got so much knowledge and so much um, still to discover, but the seed was planted. Yes. Do you have a favorite piece you were part of? All of them. All of them. <laughs> no, and I will explain you why. Because it was created in collaboration, so I would never actually do and we would accept it, something that I would not like to do. So in the end, I would do everything that I would find joyful and beautiful. I would have tools to keep it alive because it was done not on me. It was done with me. So yeah. part of my little creation as a helper to him is also in his creations. So, and that was wonderful. And that's also a, a great tool for creators to know. <laughs> And if I ask you one memory during all this time, like one moment that really stands out. I mean, we went through so many things, I know. And good and bad. And it's all like uh, incredible memory of the tour, of the rehearsal, of the creations. Yes, okay, one in memory, one swim got an idea. He wanted that we would stay in the studio over the night to be in the character, in the mood, you know, and everything. But then in the end, it didn't go over the night, but we switched off the lights and it was only this emergency neon light and we started to spin for very, very long time spinning. And actually nothing happened. I don't know. Yeah, it was not that we created an amazing scene. Actually, we did the spinning. You were also spinning up. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, but the sensation of being in this creative moment when you are tired like hell, when you cannot stand on your legs, and then you start to feel that there is always a reason for something. <laughs> even if the working hours finished, even uh, we are all deadly tired and we were all very pissed, of course, <laughs> yeah. to stay so late. But then it takes and, um, you. You yourself, you also actively create 
both uh, choreographic and dancing work and work with theater and film. And I want to ask you, what inspires you to create? Okay, first of all, I'm a dream collector. I used to write my dreams down since university times. I'm really busy a lot with my dreams and dreams of the others too. If, if you tell me the dream, I'm going to write it down. It, I do have a lot of material from there because it's kind of unconscious state. I get a lot of, let's say, questions I want to find and answers. And then I start to collect everything, everything. I look people on the street looking for the characters. I'm watching uh, paintings. I'm starting about uh, artists. Like, for example, one of the creations started with um, Nicola Herreri. He's a painter, but not only. He was a traveler and he was looking for this uh, in Russia. It's like Russian Shambhala, Bilavodje, for example. Mm -hmm. And then I started his paintings about his tree. This, uh, I, I tried to find all kinds of information I could online and in the books about the street. Did he find it finally or not? Studying his journey, I start to think about the, for example, uh, an act of the uh, heroes. Like, does heroes really exist? And then I start to investigate that uh, from psychological uh, point of view that as we imagine the heroes who just run through the fire just to be heroes. <laughs> it doesn't exist. It's an instinct. It's a very animalistic instinct. And then finally I find or I meet my artists. And this is very important for me, people I'm working with, because for me they are like colors uh, for the painter, you know. Yeah. It's a material I'm using a lot as they are. Is there one artist of any sort that you would like to collaborate? Since many years, since I was still working with him, I always wanted to work with Joseph Natch. And I even tried to approach him, but he is so into his world that it was difficult. But I did my job. I went very honest, <laughs> saying, I just, I want to work with you. <laughs> He said, I, he said, I have no place, <laughs> but I kept coming back. So that's the artist I really would love to work with. And of course, as now I'm very into the film and cinema, I really would love to work with a lot of directors and which I cannot say because if I say one, <laughs> yes, no. Uh, so you, you already mentioned that you now a lot into into film. I wanted to ask you about your future film between heaven and earth. To be honest, uh, yes, I started shooting of my film, but right now we are on standby because of the budget problems and. Uh, it's a pity because actually it's very into the day the theme of the film I'm doing. Yeah, first of all, it's post-apocalyptic thriller. It's about the isolation, quite very similar <laughs> of what is happening right now. Yeah. <laughs> I started to write script in 2015. So it's not exactly how it happened with us <laughs> in 2020, but it is about isolation of the soul, of the heart and of the society from each other. So we were planning to release it actually this year, the end of this year, but uh -huh. it will happen. I know it will. <laughs> Just to get a little bit more in detail, you wrote the script for this movie or you also actively participating in filming and directing process or how? I wrote a script and I'm directing. Acting yourself? No. No. <laughs> Enough, no. Anyway, I hope uh, it's, it, it happened. Come it on. will happen. I believe that this kind of work and this kind of works, they need the right time yes. to yes. come through. So probably it wasn't the right time. So I'm I mean, waiting for the right time. It's like the saying, everything happens for a reason, no? Uh, should we talk about Suspiria? How did you find yourself on the set of such a big movie? This was very unexpected. Mid-August 2016, I got a text from Damien Jalet, choreographer of the Suspiria. He sent me text uh, saying that production is looking for an actress. So it's a very specific role. He said, I immediately thought of you because he thought I would fit perfectly there. Also because I had to play Russian. Uh, I record the self-tape and it went to Luca, Luca Guandanino, and I was in. And September, I was uh, in Varese rehearsing. 
So it went really fast and that's how it happened. <laughs> that phone call, was it like shock? No, oh. I always have this kind of dumb sensation when people tell me like, if you're going, I don't believe. <laughs> I say, no, no, come on. Yeah, right. You tell us a little bit about the experience working with quite famous big actresses like uh, Dakota Johnson or Tilda Swinton, you know, to be with them in a shot, in a scene. I'm very curious to hear from you. How is it to be, you know, on the equal with them in this situation in their world? Maybe this is my self protection like. I'm kind of, I, I'm, I'm going to kind of coma state and I am going through anything I have to. I'm becoming numb to this kind of, oh my God, till the swing. Yeah. <laughs> and besides these, they're such a wonderful people. No, 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 no. It's okay. Let's face this. And such a hard, open person. So it was a pleasure to get to know them. And I'm so thankful for their support because, just as you said, yeah, you end up like in the in in their cage, and then you think like, oh my god, they're gonna tear me apart and eat me. She's had enough. But no, they are so sweet, and I'm so again thankful to my destiny to give me such a gift of getting to know them and working together with them. There is another, of course, a scene of you, very, very famous and very, very traumatic. That of course, I cannot show on the live feed. And for light, it's not for lighthearted in any case, but a very famous scene. And for this scene, and uh, there was a lot of preparation work, like uh, on, the, on the rehearsing the material itself, but also a lot of makeup and preparing for this. How can you tell us a little bit about it for those who saw the movie or maybe haven't seen it? It was depending on what kind of damages I got already. <laughs> so we were shooting the scene for two full days, the scene in the mirror room. I would begin as I am. And then I think towards the end of the second day, I would carry on me about maybe 10 kilos of prosthetic. I, again, I end up with an amazing team of the prosthetic artists guided and directed by uh, Marc Collier. And it's just so fascinating to see how they do this. It's, uh, and they do it on you. So, of course, it was very tiring two days. Like for the last scene of the film, the Sabbath, where actually you almost don't see me, but for one week... Every morning I would get about four, even more hours of makeup done by three artists. What have you learned uh, from such a big movie set? I learned what I learned. <laughs> wow, everything was new. I learned never stop working. That's <laughs> it's very hard to be on the big uh, set. Yes. Uh, so, because I, I would say that maybe many people think, oh, the stars, they all treated like stars, they and what, and then they go in front of the camera and they two, do two lines and then they go to their makeup uh, place or their space. No, it's very hard. It's very hard to stay on set. And it starts really early in the morning, sometimes wake up all at five and even early to be already at, at five on the set because they need four hours for makeup for 10 o'clock to be ready, you know? And then you stay there the whole day. And yes, it's a lot of waiting, but it's also a lot of concentration and uh, responsibility because all these people, hundreds of people doing for you to be and look okay. <laughs> Your dreams and, and hopes for the future? Of course, I dream to finish my, my own film. And I dream to get soon another very interesting role and i hope that this mess around the world will <laughs> end up soon and i hope that all children will find their parents that there will be no orphan children anymore in the world why dance is important is it important? How, how can we live without dance <laughs> i mean dance is a movement we are made by movement. We cannot live without movement. As soon as you stop moving, you are dead. 
<laughs> we have been dancing since beginning of times for any kind of reason to go to hunt to express uh, and aggression happiness any kind of gesture of normal human being and person on the street it's already dance steps i cannot imagine what means a life without dance we are all dancing <laughs> not only them to everyone yes so that's why it's important to keep dancing <laughs> i think it's good it was pretty nice interview yes say goodbye goodbye <laughs> hi everybody <laughs> thank you for watching today's episode i hope you found it interesting and if so consider sharing it with your friends and colleagues let us know who should be our next guest in the comment section below please support dance and art until next time Thank you.